Imagine someone sitting there eating yogurt, telling everyone around them that the probiotics in their yogurt are a must have for any healthy diet. People have lost interest in the discussion long ago, but they keep hammering on how wonderful probiotics are if you want good gut health. And people are desperately trying to change the subject. They've even started talking about the weather because they're tired of talking about yogurt. Now imagine it, but you've had enough. You snap and you blurt out probiotics aren't that great. They can actually be really harmful to the stunned silence of everyone at the table. Then the yogurt evangelist replies, that's crazy. My yoga podcast had a nutritionist on that said probiotic yogurt is incredible for you. And then you say, then watch this video, you yogurt fiend. And then what if I told you that probiotics are linked to worse cancer outcomes? And what if I told you another gut health product is linked to improved cancer outcomes? Well, don't take my word for it, like a yoga podcast with some random nutritionist. Let's look at the study on that very topic. In this study, researchers recruited late stage cancer patients and most of which were being treated using an immunotherapy called an anti-PD-1 therapy. In short, it's an antibody that binds to a protein called PD-1 on immune cells that target cancer cells. When bound, they block an inhibitory protein called PDL protein from interacting with it. When blocked by this antibody, the immune cell remains active and continues to attack cancer cells. So anti-PD-1 therapy keeps the immune system attacking cancer cells, a good thing. Then they classified people as responders or non-responders, meaning people who did not experience cancer progression, so responders to the anti-PD-1 therapy, or people who did experience disease progression non-responders. Then they focused in on two groups of bacteria assessed by fecal matter. So I won't pronounce them, but here they are. One is a family of bacteria and the other is a genus or a subset of related bacteria in that family. They focused on these two because other studies have shown there's a link between these bacteria and cancer therapy. In addition, these bacteria are linked to reduced inflammation under correct circumstances. So what happened when they compared these two bacteria in the non-responders and the responders? Let's look, and I promise we'll tie this into probiotics soon. We have the family and the genus amount on the vertical axis, and the higher the box and whisker, the more of each. The red are the non-responders, and the blue are the responders. As indicated by the statistics, p-values under 0.05 indicate a difference. The responders have greater amounts of these bacteria in the gut. Okay, a notable difference, but what does this mean to the grand scheme of what we're discussing here? Well, the next step the researchers took was to quantify probiotic use over the last month across the groups, both combined into one, responders and non-responders together. If we look at the progression of cancer, so indicated as survival probability, so the higher, the better on the vertical axis, we look at time on the horizontal axis. And we have those who consume probiotics versus those that didn't. Those that do seem to do worse than those who don't consume probiotics. As in, they have greater risk of cancer progression, an alarming result. But we're talking about unadjusted correlations here. And on top of that, the statistics still indicated no statistically significant effect. So we certainly can't rely on these data alone. So the researchers did something pretty involved. They took fecal matter from the cancer patients that were responsive and transferred it to germ-free mice, meaning these mice don't have their own gut bacteria. Now, these mice were then exposed to either sterile water or given one of two probiotics to consume over several days. Then they were injected with melanoma tumors. So in brief, they took mice without their own gut bacteria and gave them human bacteria from the people who have better cancer outcomes. They also injected these mice with cancer cells after consuming probiotics or not. This all allows the researchers to create more of a cause and effect relationship instead of just relying on simple correlation. Here we see what happened by looking at tumor size across all three groups. The higher the lines, the greater the tumor size, so a bad thing. As is evident to you probably, those two groups given the different probiotics were in worse shape, with nearly 10 times increase in tumor size compared to the control. 
So these data further affirm that probiotics have negative consequences on cancer progression. Still, there are multiple nuances that we need to get into. But before that, let's get into the second gut health habit and its remarkably different effects. I suppose it would also be a good time to mention here that there's data on what happens to our immune cells on probiotics, what happens to our gut diversity, and what happens when you combine gut health nutrients. I'll be covering that in the extended version of this video, which is available to the Physionic Insiders, which includes articles, a library of exclusive videos, a private podcast, live sessions, and more. If you're interested, check it out in the description box, but don't talk our ears off about the benefits of probiotics, please. We'd rather discuss the weather. Psst. not really. As the study title indicates, the other gut health nutrient is dietary fiber. So not only did the researchers ask about probiotic consumption, but they asked the patients about their dietary fiber intake. They separated them based on if they were low fiber consumers or high fiber consumers, and they did the same thing tried to identify the relationship to cancer progression. This time, there was a clear and statistically identified link between fiber and cancer progression. Those that consumed more had much less cancer progression compared to those that consumed low or no fiber. Naturally, they did a similar experiment that they did with probiotics with the mice, except these were not germ-free mice. Here, we're again looking at tumor growth in mice under the same circumstances, but this time on a low fiber or high fiber diet. In addition, they're treating the mice with the same anti-cancer treatment, the anti-PD-1 therapy. Remarkably, we see that mice on the low fiber diet and those mice not given the treatment experience equally quick tumor growth. Yet, when the treatment is paired with fiber, the tumor does not progress at all. This suggests that fiber, for a lack of a better word, unlocks the effectiveness of an anti-cancer therapy. Fair enough. We now have some distinguishing features between these two gut health consumables, but it wouldn't be responsible to just leave it there because there are several things that you should know. For one, while the combination of associative data in humans and experimental data in mice creates a great story, it is solid evidence, it still needs some work, and we can't necessarily uh, jump to cause and effect, although it is stronger than just pure associative evidence. I'd also mention that the researchers went through a lot of hoops to reach these results. They identified responders and non-responders, chose a bacteria family to focus on, they created their own cutoffs for sufficient and insufficient fiber, they didn't quantify the amounts or types of probiotics consumed, and the experimental design for the fiber mouse study and the probiotic mouse study had a few differences in design. So all this to say, this seems more exploratory than dead set proof. I'd like to see more before condemning all probiotics. I should also point out, because people tend to take these kinds of data as black and white, that probiotics can still be beneficial in other ways, even if they're not beneficial in this case. Not all good things are universally good. That's where nuance and education are critical. And the same could be said of fiber, even if, as a general rule, fiber has been noted to have widespread health benefits, including here. So, if you have cancer, especially melanoma, and you are on an anti-cancer therapy, this study lightly suggests that probiotics aren't your friend, but dietary fiber is your friend, and can really help increase the potency of your anti-cancer treatment. So, you can tell the yoga podcast listening Mark that probiotics aren't always the best thing ever. But, you know what is? This next video, it truly is the best thing ever. Now, let me bore you to death with why I think you should watch